Hey friend, come on in. I am working crazy in my kitchen today. It's a bit of a mess. Just got an Instacart order. I'll share that with you. We are in the kitchen today making freezer meals. I am out of freezer meals and I wanna make some um, make ahead freezer meal kits. We're gonna do that tonight. And I'm preparing for my segment on Studio 5 tomorrow morning. Yeah, so everything that I'm gonna be cooking here, I'll be sharing on that segment. So I thought you guys can come and come along with me and get this done and I'll show you how I'm organizing it for the segment and how I'm thinking about maybe displaying it on their kitchen like by the stove and counter area. I did a segment for them in May, May or June, July, no July. Oh my gosh, how long has it been? I have no idea. That was a load of fun, I was so nervous. But now I know what to expect, I know the flow of things, so I'm feeling really good. But I got a lot of cooking to do because I want to fill my freezers and bring things to the studio. So come with me and watch as I prepare for my TV segment on Studio 5 up in Salt Lake City. Okay, so I just got uh, my order from Instacart. I did not have time today to run to the store. I have, oh my gosh, that's chicken grease. Now watch, I'll wake up tomorrow morning with a big zit on my face. I actually haven't been to bed tonight. So I've been working on uh, with my husband and web designer. Uh, we're moving our shop over to Shopify. So there's a lot to do for the planner launch, which already happened for you guys just a few days ago. I got a lot here. And then when I made my Instacart order, I changed things up, but I still might bring some of these things and have them out. So, all right, let me share with you what I got from this Instacart order. Okay, here it all is. <laughs> all right, let's start. So I had, I wanted chicken I didn't have to thaw out. I'm already thawing out beef, so I wanted to try to make tonight go as quick as possible. So I got chicken. Uh, these are chicken tenders, and these are chicken breasts. So I am going to be using up some Alfredo, and um, so I'm replacing what I'm going to be using up in my food storage room. So two four cheese Alfredo sauces, ricotta cheese, two bags of raw shrimp, or for that's for the stir fry. I still might use the meatballs. I kind of switched up a meal, but I think that might still be on the docket. I'm still gonna do everything and bring everything. Um, so we have some beef meatballs, a red onion, yellow peppers. I also have red peppers, green peppers, cilantro, two small eight ounces of sour cream, uh, two cubed hams for pizza um, pizza kits, and I did grab their pizza dough. It looked bigger online, and even reading the size, I, I just wasn't thinking. Um, I thought I could get two pizza crusts out of it, but no. So um, I'm gonna show this. If I don't have time to make the pizza crust um, for the kits, I'll just use these. And then we have cilantro, four bags of the Asian style stir fry. We're gonna do stir fry kits. I didn't realize, this was the replacement. The other ones are smaller. So we might be able to get two kits out of this, out of each one, so we'll see. Um, some broccoli florets and then pineapple to bits. I have the chunks. So um, there are gonna be some case lot sales happening here in Utah soon, and I'm hoping I can get my hands on some tidbits instead of chunks. So I have two there for the pizza kits. All right, this is my Instacart haul for these freezer meals, so let's get going. I don't know if you can see this, but my microwave is disgusting. I had butter today explode, so I gotta clean that up. Um, lovely. So we're gonna ignore that. I'm putting um, back in for the four pounds of hamburger. This is for our um, taco kits. So I put this back in my dirty microwave and keep defrosting it. So defrost one, four pounds, start. So that's gonna get a head start. And as soon as it's like pliable, then I'm gonna break it down and we'll get it going on the stove. So yay. I mapped out the segment with the questions that they're asking me about freezer meals. So I kind of put it in order so my brain can see it. We're gonna talk about what I love about freezer meals. We're gonna talk about the tools that we need, like our containers, our bins, 
um, bags, things like that. The recipes that make great freezer meals. And that's basically what your family eats. So everything that I am showing on the show is exactly what my family eats. Like I'll try new recipes, I share them all the time with you, but I'm pretty dang sure our family will like them. There's only been less than five fingers on some freezer meals we just didn't like. Freezer meal kits, we're gonna jump into the freezer meal kits, which you're gonna see me put together today. So on the menu for our kits, we have homemade pizza, fajita, taco, and uh, yeah, and then we have some dump and go recipes, recipes to use up our leftovers, and I'll show you all that. Okay, so that is the itinerary. I am so excited to be invited back on the show. They already want me back for the fall, so that's exciting. It's just fun. The whole thing is fun. Let's get moving. I need to get my Instapot out of my pantry and get a big pot of water boiling. I really would like you to boil now. I have a five pound bag of russet potatoes that I grabbed at Macy's the other day. So I'm gonna get these peeled and going. Okay, I'm gonna put a garbage bag in this bowl and I'm just gonna peel it in here. Do you guys use a peeler or do you use a knife to peel? I, I just do better with a knife. I can't stand a potato peeler. I just feel like it goes slower. What are you guys? I would love to know. Leave that down in the comments. I'm gonna use the American Beauty pasta and not my gluten-free because it just will do better with the freezer and all that. So we're gonna cook up two 16 ounce packages. My water is ready. I just need to salt it. So we don't wanna cook these all the way through. We want them al dente because when we freeze them, they'll finish off in the, you know, in the freezer, so. And yes, you can freeze pasta. You just can't cook it all the way. Let's see if this hamburger is close to being workable. Well, some of them are, others new. I'm gonna tip these upside down. Get them back in. All right, so the pasta's going. Now we're gonna cube and get everything um, in that slow cooker, that Instapot. Oh my gosh, yes, because when that is done, we've got to get the rice in there too, because we need to cook up some rice. You see Cece's bowl? She gets, she is like this nervous little dog. When her collar hits anything on it, she gets so spooked, so spooked that she won't eat. So it's on a paper plate that we change out. It's so ridiculous, but she's such a nervous Nelly. All right, I think I'm gonna do a, well, maybe a little more than a half cup, like three, four cup of water. Let's do some anti-no-nos. Have you guys tried anti-no-nos? So good. Let's put some of that in there. This is going to cook on high pressure for 12 minutes. Make sure that's on sealant. Okay, it's gonna do its thing. Woo, it is close. It is so close. I'm gonna taste one more and see where we're at and then we'll hit it under the water. You guys like that facial? <laughs> We're gonna rinse this off and get all that starch. No! Oh man, I just wasted a ton. That sucks. Oh, that ticks me off. Oh, that's a ton of pasta. Oh, that is so irritating. Oh, that was like at least two kits of pasta. Oh, I hate wasting food so much. And I just put like the hamburger grease, like that um, hamburger blood down in. Wouldn't have grabbed it anyway, I'm just saying. Like, can't save it. All right, cold water. 
Gonna rinse this off. Get it cooled down, stop that cooking. Now if you have kids that love pasta, these are gonna be fun for them. Our third child, Boston, he's 15, he does mountain biking and he eats a lot of pasta right now. He's burning a lot of calories. Oh my gosh, can I waste any more noodles? I'm gonna let this drain. I'm gonna put it halfway on my sink here so I don't lose any more pasta. Now our hamburger is going. I need that really cool tool a little bit. Oh, yes, it's right here. This is from Pampered Chef. And it works the hamburger. Oh, softened up good because that middle was still frozen. So, yeah. Oh, this one's really frozen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is still a brick. Come on, Kimmy. Come on. Put lean your body into it. Come on. Yeah. Oh yeah. I still got a little something in me. Whew. Alright, I am gonna work with this rotisserie chicken because it's gonna be part of our leftovers segment. And I love getting rotisserie chicken. I get it quite often and I pull everything off. So I am gonna actually pull off the wing. Um, that was a sad little pull, but uh, oh girl, there we have it. Cause I wanted to roast this up in my oven really quick. And I'm gonna grab his thigh and drumstick. Okay, I'm gonna take this skin off. Am I grossing any of you out? Oh my gosh, I know some people can't handle chicken. And I am gonna take everything off here, the two breasts, and there's a little bit of dark meat underneath. And I am gonna take it all off, get it in this freezer bag. And then this will be part of our leftover chicken segment. And what we'll do is make a really yummy freezer meal out of it. You could cube it, but um, I like to have it shredded because then you have more choices for recipes. So we're just gonna keep shredding this and make sure I don't get any bones in here. All right, I gotta go check on my ground beef, give it a stir. It is browning up right now. Do you guys like, but tell me first, do you guys like getting rotisserie chicken and um, getting everything off the bone? And then I like to put the bones in the slow cooker with some carrots and celery and onions and spices and herbs and create chicken stock. And then from that, you could freeze that. But I like getting um, at least two uh, chicken, rotisserie chickens. I thought I put two down in my cart, but maybe they only had the one because it was toward the end of the, you know, rush hour. I bet they were all taken. So, um, and then that way you could take the bones, let them cook in your slow cooker and make a nice bone broth. And then you could freeze that and use it later or can it up, whatever you want to do. I'm gonna get the grease out of here so much. Okay, we're gonna need a cup of taco seasoning. Okay, I added the taco seasoning and the water in. Now we're gonna mix this up and get this simmering. I made a mess, you guys. Look at this, look at that. Taco seasoning, oh my gosh. Oy. It's okay, it all gets cleaned up, right? Okay, here is all the chicken from the rotisserie. And then I labeled this bag uh, chicken bones. And I'm gonna put this in the freezer, and then when I get another rotisserie chicken, we'll get this in the slow cooker. All right, I'm gonna shut the blinds. It's getting dark, and I don't want anyone watching me. Oh, okay, just shut the blinds. I have lots of eggs to wash to get ready from our chickens, but that's gonna to have to wait. I can't do that now, but that needs to get done. Let's, the lighting's bad. Let's continue making these kits. I had hit the record button, but I didn't. So these are the trays from our harvest rate 
the freeze dryer and they're so thin that we're gonna use these to get in the freezer. So I did a layer of macaroni and I'm gonna get those in there and then I'm gonna get another tray and do another layer and get them in our big freezer so they could start freezing up for us. Just mashing up these potatoes. I have butter um, and that seasoning still there and then I'll add some milk. But uh, all right, let's get this going. All right, I'm gonna get this into a bowl. Ooh, yummy mashed potatoes. Look at, my apron is like sliding off me, you guys. I gotta tie it again. It keeps coming undone. When I was over by the taco meat stirring it up, my apron like fell all the way down. Look at that. So this apron I got at Hobby Lobby. So what I like about it is to tighten it, you just pull it and it rises up. Isn't that cool? Yes. That is freaking awesome. So, and the strings are nice and long. I love that. All right, hopefully this will stay on now. But isn't that cool? So if you want one, you know, instead of just the, how they make them so small, like this grows with you. So that is fantastic. So these are going to cool because I eventually want to freeze them into portions. So. I'm just gonna put that over here. All right, let's start on the taco kits. Do you see how like, she's like, please drop something, please. This is what she does, guys. I trip over her all the time. That's what Paigey does. She lays in that funny position and she waits for me to drop food. She's like, it's been like one minute since you dropped something. Look at, she doesn't talk about her, she's wagging her tail. She's so cute. <laughs> For the stir fry packets, I am going to rinse off some basmati rice. I never really rinse off my rice when I like cook it. I just don't. But when it comes to freezing my rice, I want that starch out. Am I doing this right? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get this in the Instant Pot. This is two cups of rice. I'm going to cook up maybe six cups. Uh, hmm, maybe eight cups of rice. Yeah, eight cups. Doing rice can be kind of intimidating in the Instant Pot. This one website said that for not hard or, or el dente, um, the best way that she found was doing one and one fourth cup water um, to each cup of rice. Okay, so high pressure, six minutes. Okay, we'll do that. I did spray the bottom of my Instapot. Um, the woman on that website said that it helps with sticking, so I've never done that before, so we're gonna test it out. Rice is in there. Um, Potatoes are waiting for me here, so let's get the taco kits put together. Okay, what I like about these taco kits is that it's perfect for the kids, right? So if if it's a Saturday, um, I mean, I can make them bitter, bigger for the whole family, but it's those times when the kids are hungry and um, it just, I don't know, it just, the tacos to me just seem more of something that the kids could get and and heat up and, and, and do. So you could do two cup portions uh, and that's what I'm gonna do. So we'll do taco meat and I'm gonna put a 22, okay? So you can make it bigger for the size of your family, but I wanna make these for the kids. So like after school, like if I know they're coming home, I could take one of these out, you know, let it sit out and do its thing and the kids can have their afternoon thing going on. You know what I mean? Okay, got my taco meat, it's all cooled off. And I guess um, a pound is two cups. I was reading up on. So once you've cooked down your meat, like two cups is a pound. That's what I saw on the interwebs. We can check and see if that's true. I 
I've got a scale here. Let's see that. 10.5. Oh, I'm doing half cups. Duh. Oh, Kimmy. Jeez Louise. Can you tell I haven't gone to bed yet? I've been up for a long time. Okay, this is 1.14. So I'm just gonna. Jeez. We got we, we guys blah blah blah. I need to go to bed. Okay, so this is one pound. I know you're all gonna say all the plastic. I get it. I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. And we can make this with all containers, but that's where it gets bulky in your freezer. So, oh wait, let's write on it. But I, I see what you're saying, so I know, but you know what? I just, I just can't help myself. We love tacos. Oh my gosh. Yum, yum, yum. All right, out of four pounds of ground beef, four, one pounds, four kits. So we can make four taco kits. Okay, so that part's done. Now let's put, um, let's get our cheese together for that. So we just opened tonight this bag of Mexican style cheese from Costco. Now this is, this part is really desire. How much cheese do you want, right? So that's a cup of cheese. I'm gonna do maybe two cups. The kids love the cheese on it. So there is two cups of cheese. And if you wanna write on it that there's two cups of cheese, then um, go for it. And so when you take this cheese out of your freezer, you're gonna have to like whack it help separate it, okay? That's why we're using already pre-shredded cheese. It's got like that coating on it. All right, let's do another one. All right, now we're going to put some um, flour tortillas in. These are the fajita size, or you could do the street taco size. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna do six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. Two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I don't think I bought more of these. So I'll finish these kits tomorrow. I'll go buy some more of these, but I definitely need to have some in for the Studio 5 segment. I'm just gonna put flour tortilla. Flour tortilla. Okay, so I'll get more tomorrow. Not a big deal. We gotta go to the pharmacy anyway. So we'll do six. So I'm gonna take this bag and I'm going to write taco kit. And we're going to put a pound of our taco meat, our cheese, and our tortillas in here. If you really wanna jazz this up, besides just this, this is pretty darn cool, right? We could do one more element to it. So what I have here are these little four ounce containers. I got them off Amazon. I ordered them today and they came within like a few hours. How crazy is that? All right, plans to pot is slow releasing for, um, it slow released for 10 minutes. Well, it was supposed to, it did 16. So now I'm releasing it. So let's open this up. So you have these little cups, right? So we can put some salsa in there. Give it space for it to work its magic in the freezer. They, they stay on pretty good. If you're a little nervous, you could tape it down. They're, they seem really sturdy, but you know how things happen. Do you have to do this with the salsa? No, but there are times where we are out of salsa and it's a complete bummer. Then I have some sour cream. Or you can mix your salsa, your sour cream with your salsa. You could do that and only have one of them in there. That's not a bad idea. 
If you're a worry wart like me, you could do this, okay? So I'm gonna put some green onions in one. Green onions freeze very well. I have froze these before, put them in a container, that way I could drop them in things. Even if they're frozen, they thaw super quick. Put green onions in this one. I mean, you could put them in a baggie, it'll probably save more room, but I'm gonna try it out like this. And then you could always reuse these cups. Okay, so we have uh, green onions, sour cream, and salsa at the bottom of our bag. We have our taco seasoning, our cheese, and our flour tortillas. We can put that right in here. You could also put cilantro in there, but I don't like, I'm not a big fan of frozen cilantro. If I know we're gonna have these and we're menu planning, um, I'll go ahead and shred up some uh, lettuce and then chopped up tomatoes, stuff like that. Okay, this I think is easier. Putting the containers on the side like this and then everything else, yes. There we go. And there, my friends, we have a taco kit. All right, we are gonna make a fajita kit, okay? So, uh, we're gonna start with our peppers. Do you guys like to put green in your fajitas? We're gonna wash these up, we're gonna slice them, and we're gonna slice up an onion. So let's wash these. Do you like green bell peppers in your fajitas? Or just the red and the orange? Red and orange is usually what people put in there. Yeah, you don't want green? All right, well, we don't have to put green in there. All right, we'll keep it to the pretty color then. Mr. Toodles, help me decide that. Because I, I like it, but. All right, that is done. Okay, so I am getting help tonight with store-bought pizza dough. I love making um, our dough, but you gotta get help where you can, right? I'm just debating, um, do I make these ones with Brooke on camera or have one already made, made and then make one with her? That's what we're debating on right now. I guess I'm stuck on like which ones we make with her and have already done. So if you guys remember from my pizza kit video, your dough is in another okay. bag with a little bit of olive oil in it. Um, so it doesn't like stick to the bag as it rises. I'm just debating which recipes um, that are a recipe to make with her. And I keep flip flopping. And this is something about me I hate. I, I'm such a flip flopper. I'm like, oh, but we could do this. And, oh, we could do this. And you just need, just that. Okay, and then you put your pizza dough in. Okay. So that way it'll rise in here and it's got the oil so it will not stick to the back. Voila! Because we love making homemade pizza but if I, when I'm like, oh I have to make the dough, I gotta take out my Bosch, I gotta take out the flour, like you know, I gotta do I gotta do all that, and it's just like. So you could do it this way, or you can make your pizzas and freeze them um, in their shape. Um, we've never done that. Um, we just never had the room to do that. But if you have the room, you could totally do that. I just went into my freezer and grabbed my frozen pepperoni. So I had frozen pepperoni in this bag. I'll leave the full video to the pizza kit video down below so you can see it. So now we need cheese. And I got a big bag of mozzarella cheese. So, and cheese is all preference because you can't go wrong with cheese. <laughs> Look at, you can see my ring lights. This is not a good angle. All right, let's go down here. One, two, three, I don't know, we're just gonna fill this up. You can't, I've never been like, oh, we have too much cheese. Like that's never happened. So we're gonna write here on this one, um, 
we're gonna write pizza kit. All right, so you've got your cheese, your pepperoni. You could add mushrooms, you can add onions. I'll probably make some of those up and take that with us. Okay, and you put them in here. Then pizza dough. This might actually need a little bit more oil in it. Seeing how this one is turning out. air out good all right this goes in the bag as well and boom got yourself a pizza kit okay so this is the shrimp fajita kit 22 okay so for this kit you're gonna need a fajita seasoning packet Bam. Then you need some of your fajita vegetables. I've got these nifty food gloves. Lots of gloves. I know, right? <laughs> so then um, I'm gonna put now this of course kit, like I said before with the other taco one, just depends on how many people you're feeding, how big you want to make it, right? But like, I'm going out of town for a conference and Derek's got all this stuff for him and the kids or just for the kids to feed the kids, you know? Now they're gonna be not as crunchy as they were once they're in the freezer though. That's the bummer part, but that's okay. That's okay. It's still gonna be yummy. It'll be better not doing it in the slow cooker. You can make fajitas in the slow cooker and I've done that, but Derek and I don't like how the peppers taste. Like, they're just not crunchy, you know. Okay, so you have your peppers, you have your fajita seasoning mix. These are tail off peeled into veins. So, here's our shrimp. And you, or you could do chicken, or you can do steak, okay? But we are gonna do shrimp, because yum. You can actually keep it in its packaging if you want, and not take it out. Okay, why waste more plastic? So you could fit him in here. Okay, then your vegetables. Okay. Your fajita seasoning. Now you could leave it like this and call it good and there is your shrimp fajita kit. Or, or you can grab some tortillas. There's eight of them here add as many as you want but get your tortillas in your bag that way like I did earlier today I'm like oh I thought I had more than I did you won't run into this problem you have you will have enough to feed your family boom now I kind of like putting two packets in um, but I actually like homemade fajita seasoning so much better and we're gonna be, be making all those together in just a few weeks. So there you go. Boom. Now just seal it up. This will fit really good. You didn't have to touch the shrimp. All you had to do was just chop up your veggies and you're done. And boom, shrimp fajita kit. I was silly and didn't wash all the peppers. So what I'm gonna do is finish washing these, get them chopped up and then I'll put them in a container and take them to the studio with me. And I have another bag of, um, I have another packet of fajita seasoning mix. I have more shrimp and we can put that bag together on the air as well. Why stickers? Why? Why? Derek is helping me put the barbecue chicken street tacos together in the slow cooker. Um, but we're gonna put the slow cooker, um, like the part that you could take out the bowl, in the refrigerator. So tomorrow all he has to do is place it in and let it cook in the morning. And then we'll have dinner tomorrow night in the slow cooker. 
all ready to go because um, after I get done with taping the segment, I'll be coming home and finishing up things for the planner launch and we won't have to worry about dinner because it is in the slow cooker ready to go. I shared that on a video recently, the best of crock pot video. I'll have it linked for you. I have to have a lot of onion in my fajitas. I can't stand it when the ratio is like a ton of peppers and like hardly any onion. These are all ready to go. Great. Okay, it is one in the morning and I have got to go to bed because I have not slept. Um, I've been up for well over 24 hours. So I'm on how many? Like coming up on 48. I'm coming up on 48? If you were to stay up for another five hours, six hours, you'd be 48 hours. Okay, I gotta go to bed. So we figured out the meals. Um, I had too much on my list, too much, and it was stressing me out. So we whittled it down. I opened my freezer and a tray of the macaroni fell. I was not having luck with that pasta. So we decided we're gonna showcase a lasagna kit on, on a display, but basically just the tip is telling them that you don't have to cook your lasagna noodles. That's the tip. Okay, I'm going to, I redid the rice because the basmati, the way that the lady said it, it, it made it into mush. I shouldn't have high pressured it. I should have just did the rice option. I have all this basmati rice here, which is not gonna go to waste. We're gonna make stuff with it. So we're gonna wrap this up and put it away. And we are showcasing the pizza kits, the taco kits, the stir fry kit using leftovers, and um, the tip on the lasagna. And I feel like I'm missing something, but we are ready to go. I'll share, I'll finish sharing all that with you. We'll finish putting some kits together. But first, I gotta go to bed. <laughs> I gotta go to bed. Um, and then you'll see the setup at Studio Five. So join me in a minute. Tally and I are here. We're setting up our kitchen space. So I'm gonna see, I'll put you guys somewhere and you can you can watch us figure this out. friends okay today went well it is now in the evening and we have dinner done we made dinner last night and prepared it this is the barbecue chicken tacos and actually shared it on a slow cooker video with you guys just this past week it's on the video that's best of crock pot those are on there it's delicious so that is dinner tonight all ready to go we made everything put it in the slow cooker and this portion here then took that out and put it in the other refrigerator. So this morning, all we had to do was just throw that on there, plug it in, turn it on, and we were good to go. Today went well, but it was also hard. Um, I had so many options, and I just had too much on my plate. I wanted to share all the things, and you just can't in a six-minute segment. And then I kept flip-flopping last night. I could do this, or I could do this. This is who I am. I have too many ideas in my head, try to execute them all, that it stresses me out. I need to learn to keep it simple. And I was on the phone yesterday with my friend Karina from Life's Little Things and she said, Kimmy, I'm gonna tell you what my son told me. And he said, mom, remember to kiss. And she said, what? Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> but I'm not stupid. So I'm gonna use it as keep it simple, sweetie. Keep it simple and that way I don't get overwhelmed. Sometimes having too many options gives us the anxiety, it stresses us out. I start second guessing my other options. So having too many options is too stressful. So keep it simple, sweetie. So that's the lesson that I learned. So it was just gonna be for the show freezer meal kit. So I was like, oh, okay, that's easy. The fajitas, the pizza, um, the stir fries, right? And uh, I was gonna put together the pasta one. I didn't end up making it but stay tuned. Um, but then when I got the show notes and the questions that were going to be asked to me, it messed with my head 
it made me go, oh, well, if we're gonna talk about this, then I could show this, and she mentioned this, so I could show this. That's where it tripped me up. But all in all, when it was time to film at the studio, the questions were done a little differently, and we went with the flow of what we were talking about. So, having too many options can mess you up big time, and that's what happened to me. All in all, it turned out great. It was a ton of fun. But did you guys notice that in the pizza kit, I forgot to put my sauce in? Oh yeah. Stay tuned um, with all the food that I bought, all the meals that I thought I was going to do. I'm going to make up a ton of freezer meals for back to school because I was excited to do the segment because it was perfect timing because I need some freezer meals in my freezer. So I still need a lot more and I'm gonna take all the groceries that I didn't use. I'm going to be taking all the ideas that I wanted, the recipes that I wanted to share, I'm going to make into another video for you guys and we are gonna fill our freezer, so I hope it motivates you. Thank you for joining me. I have two videos right here for freezer meals that will motivate you to get going and getting in your kitchen. But remember, don't pick too many options in your freezer meal making session and keep it simple. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you soon, bye.